In this snippet, I'm going to show you how to get Laravel Echo working in a Vue CLI built project using an API which has some kind of WebSocket functionality, whether you're using driver like Pusher or if you're using the popular Laravel WebSockets package. So essentially, we're going to end up with an API which creates some kind of event and then our client which listens to them events. So to get started, I've already created a fresh Laravel project. I've switched over uh, the database configuration, but I've done absolutely nothing else. We're gonna run through this completely uh, from scratch together. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and just migrate the default migrations. And really the first step is just to get some kind of real-time functionality set up within Laravel. So we're gonna use Laravel WebSockets for this, although like I said, you can use Pusher. So if we head over to the installation instructions for this, you may already have this set up, but let's go ahead and pull down the composer package for Laravel WebSockets. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and publish the migration so we can check on our dashboard that stores our statistic information. And uh, once this is done, we'll just run this command. Okay, so that's all done. Let's go ahead and paste that command in to publish that migration and let's run PHP Artisan Migrate. Next thing to do is get the config set up. So let's publish that configuration file over here. And what we should end up with is a WebSockets configuration file over in here, which we don't need to do anything with just now. So the next thing to do, and one step that I always forget, is come over to our main config file come all the way down to where our service providers are and make sure we enable the broadcast service provider so we can actually broadcast messages to our WebSocket server. The next thing we wanna do is head over to our broadcasting config and change over our pusher settings since we're using local WebSockets here. So if we come down to the pusher replacement section over on Laravel WebSockets, uh, we need to do a couple of things here, but let's get this config added first. So let's grab all of this config in here and just replace this out. And all this means is that rather than hitting pushers service, we hit our local host just here on this specific port. So the other thing that we need to do is make sure that we actually have the pusher PHP server running. So let's go ahead and pop that in there. And just while that's finishing, we also need to change over the broadcast driver to pusher as well. And that's over in our EMV. So let's come down and switch that over to pusher. So now that's done, let's go ahead and boot up a local web server for this. So I'm going to go into that API directory that I've installed this in, and we're just going to run PHP artisan and serve just to get this started up. So if we come over to the browser now, we should see a fresh Laravel application, which is great. Now we're not going to uh, pull in any authentication scaffolding or anything like that. We literally just want a test event which we can use to broadcast. So uh, let's also at this point go into that folder in API and also run PHP Artisan WebSockets and serve. Now what that should allow us to do is come over and access our Laravel WebSockets endpoint. At the moment we don't have an app key set so we'll go ahead and do that as well. Uh, but we should then see the dashboard which will allow us to connect to our app. So just because we're working locally I'm going to set the ID key and the secret to local. Uh, for now what I'm going to have to do is just come out of this serve and rerun it and we should end up with the following. Great, so we can connect to this now and make sure that this is working. At the moment, it doesn't look like it's working. That's just because we need to also restart the server just here. And let's come over and try that again. There we go, great. So our WebSocket server is now up and running. Let's create an event which broadcasts something so we can play around with this. Okay, so to do this, I'm just gonna go ahead and make an event within Laravel, and we're just gonna call this hello. Let's come over to our event section and hello. And let's first of all, make sure we implement the should broadcast interface that will actually broadcast that. And we're gonna switch this over to a standard channel. And I'm just gonna call this channel. And I'm just gonna choose a payload here to broadcast with since we're testing. So we're gonna say broadcast with, and we're just gonna return an array in here with a key of hello and a value of there. Great. So now what we should be able to do, perhaps over in our web routes, is create out a really simple route to test this out. So let's copy this down. Let's change that to broadcast. And let's use the broadcast helper to broadcast a new hello event. And of course, that would be any event within your application. So now we should be able to head over, duplicate this, call broadcast. And if we head over to our dashboard, we should see that event being broadcast. Now all we need to do is figure out how we can do this 
uh, and listen for this rather than within Laravel uh, instead inside of a view CLI build app or in fact any view app at all it doesn't really matter now if you've worked with Laravel before you'll know that inside of resources JS and bootstrap we actually have all this code here ready to be uncommented and used as long as we pull Laravel echo and push a JS in and that will read from our key from our cluster and any set other settings that we provide. So let's go over to the uh, overall folder that I'm using, which is WebSockets in view. At the moment, we just have that API folder in there. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new view application. So if we head over to here, let's go and come over to creating a project and we're gonna create a new project with view. So let's do that. And we're just gonna call this client, assuming that we have a separate client and API. And we're just gonna run through the settings that we need. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck linting just for now. And we don't need anything else here. If we were actually building an application, of course, we would use router, Vuex, whatever, but let's just leave that how it is. And we're not gonna save this preset just for now. Okay, so that's all finished. Let's go into that client directory and run npm run serve, and that will boot up our Vue CLI application. So let's just wait for that to build. And let's grab the URL for this here and just pop over to the browser so we can test this out. So I'm just gonna duplicate this over, pop that in, and there is our application. So we're not gonna do anything in terms of styling. We just wanna listen for this event within our view client and see the output in the console. So if we just head over to the client here, under source and main, this is probably a good place to boot this up. We could put this in a completely separate file, but for now we'll just kind of copy and paste everything over see what we need to change and mo most importantly get this working before we start to change things around so over in api let's go back under the resources tab under bootstrap and let's copy all of this and just pop this in here and of course we can tidy it up later so we need to install laravel echo and push a js so let's come over to the terminal again opening up a new tab it's going to web sockets in view but the client and let's do an npm install on Laravel Echo and push a JS and just wait for that to finish. Okay, so that's all done. Let's go back over here and let's just run this and see what happens. So let's come over here and give that a refresh. So the first thing we've got is you must pass your app key when you instantiate Pusher. Now, remember, we're connecting to our API. We're not connecting to Pusher or rather we're connecting to the WebSocket server that we're running within our API. So we need to change over some of the uh, key and cluster. We don't actually need the cluster in this case, so we can get rid of that, but we do need to store our key in an environment variable. Now, we don't have this by default within client, but uh, Vue CLI, when you build a project, does support environment variables. All you need to do is create an EMV file in the root of your project, and that should, of course, go in the client directory. So let's move that. And all this requires us to do is create a view underscore app underscore and then the name of our environment variable so in this case i'm going to call this websockets key you could call it pusher key if you want it doesn't really matter but this is set to local we already know that because we set this up in our api here to have the push app id key and secret as local so we just need the public key for this which is local so of course you can generate that and change it out a little bit later now what we also need is the location to our WebSocket server. So I'm gonna create a WebSocket server variable here. Now this isn't gonna be something like HTTPS or HTTP. It's likely gonna be a domain name when you push this to production. Uh, but for now, we just want this to be localhost and we don't even need the 8000. So we're just connecting to localhost. I think I might actually switch this over to 127001 just to not complicate anything. Uh, and we can do that over here as well. So let's also access 001 here because we might see an error with that. And we can do the same with this as well. As long as it connects, we're all good. So let's just reconnect to that server. Let's just rebroadcast this, make sure everything's coming through and it is great. And we also want this to run potentially on 127001, although it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so we've got our two environment variables in here. We can replace these out now inside of main.js. So we want the key to be process EMV, and then we want this to be view app WebSockets key. So let's switch that over. But there's a really important change that we need to make here because at the moment, we don't know the host that we're connecting to. So we're gonna go ahead and define the WebSocket host, and that is gonna be 127001. So we're gonna say process EMV, and we're gonna say view app WebSocket server. So let's pop that in there. And 
we also need to define the port as well, which is 6001. So we're just matching up the config that we set earlier over in the broadcasting within Laravel, like so. Okay, so uh, the next thing we want to do is make sure force TLS is set to false for on a local environment. And really importantly, we want to disable stats. The reason for this is by default, if anything happens in here, if we get any kind of activity, this will by default be sent to pusher. We're using a pusher replacement for our API, so we don't want the statistics to be sent over to pushers servers, which is really important. Okay, so now that we've got all of this in here, that should be good. Let's come over, give this a refresh over on our client, and it says here you must pass your app key. I think we just need to close this off and rerun it to bring them environment variables in, and there we go. So if we head over to our network tab, filter by WebSockets, we should see a 101, which means that the uh, connection is switching protocols, it's pending, it's basically waiting for any events to come in. So now we can just start testing, listening for this event over on our client. So everything in our API is done, client's almost done, we just need to somewhere in our app start to listen to this using Pusher. Now let's reference main.js again because we've got window echo here. So we can easily just in some kind of mounted hook maybe, say window echo, and we can start to listen on a particular channel. So the channel that we're listening to here is called channel. Of course, that would probably be different for you. Uh, and then we want to listen for a particular event. Now the event is just called hello. So we're just gonna pop that in there. We get a closure in here with the event data, which we can just really easily console log out. So we've got our web server set up or our API set up that can broadcast events. We've got our client, which is listening on this with this particular key on that specific port and we're disabling stats being sent through to Pusher. So what we should now be able to do is head over to our broadcast route, come over to our client and see that that has been picked up. Now, of course, there are gonna be changes when you push to production. So uh, like I said before, this is probably going to be a domain, for example, socket.cocourse.com or something like that, anywhere that you're hosting this. We have a separate course on doing that if you wanna get this set up on production, and then you just need to switch over all of your environment variables to match up. But there we go. That is how we use a view application with an API that broadcasts, and we can now just listen to any events.